In this Diablo 2 Resurrected build guide, we're going to be covering the Trapper Assassin. This is a beginner assassin leveling build that will comfortably get you through normal, which is the first difficulty of Diablo 2. If you're looking for a beginner assassin build and you aren't sure where to begin, then this guide is for you. The Trapper Assassin utilizes fire traps to deal with multiple enemies at the same time. Each trap laid on the ground will periodically attack all enemies within range, allowing you to stay away at a safe position at all times. The trap that you'll be using for this build is called Wake of Fire. This trap will periodically spawn triangular shaped waves of fire which deal massive damage and pass through enemies. It's important to note that this build guide is meant for the first difficulty level normal and up to around level 40 or so. You can still play through Nightmare with this build but there are much more efficient builds at that point of the game which I would recommend respecking into something else. If you're a new player I strongly recommend you save the respec that you get from completing the first quest End of Evil. If you do, you'll be able to talk to Akara and respec your character into a different build once you reach Nightmare difficulty. Most builds in Diablo 2 Resurrected have a stat distribution that focuses on assigning enough points into strength to meet equipment requirements, enough dexterity to reach max block chance, and then assigning everything else into vitality to gain as much life as possible. And while this is true for most builds, it can be confusing to decide when you should assign these attribute points. Strength is a requirement for most equipment pieces of the game. During your first playthrough, you'll want to have enough points to slot the best equipment for each act. This is 30 strength in Act 1, 45 strength in Act 2, and 60 strength in the remaining three acts. From here, you should only assign points into strength if you find an item that is worth the investment. If not, just assign the points into vitality. For most builds, dexterity is important to increase block chance when using a shield. Since block chance is not that important at the beginning of the game, we won't be assigning any points here. All remaining points should be spent in Vitality. Increasing Vitality will greatly increase your health pool, which is essential to stay alive against large groups of enemies. Vitality also increases your stamina, allowing you to run much further without needing to rest. No points need to be assigned into Energy. While playing the Trapper Assassin, you'll mostly focus on the Trap skill tree to deal damage, but you'll also spend some points into the Shadow Discipline skill tree to unlock Burst of Speed skill or some utility skills. The Wake of Fire Trap invokes a triangle-shaped fire wave that deals very high damage and pierces through enemies. You can have a maximum of 5 traps of any type invoked at the same time, meaning that you'll ideally want to cast 5 Wake of Fire Traps around each group of monsters. The Burst of Speed spell increases both your movement speed and attack speed. Different to other skills, traps are not affected by faster cast rate, but their cast speed is affected by attack speed instead. This means that a higher attack speed will mean more traps laid in less amount of time. The extra movement speed provided by this skill is very useful as well, allowing you to quickly travel through the map or run in circles while enemies die to your traps. The Cloak of Shadows skill covers the area in darkness, forcing all monsters to stop their attacks and cast unless they are in melee range. This completely locks out ranged enemies. It also lowers monsters' defense and increases your own. Because of the insane amount of damage dealt by this build, you won't need Cloak of Shadows during early stages of the game as you'll kill everything before it has a chance to strike back. But if you find yourself struggling with ranged enemies, don't hesitate to grab it earlier. The Fade skill provides plus all resistances as well as reducing curse duration. This also affects shrines. It also has a hidden physical resistance bonus, which is great for increasing survivability. The problem with Fade is that it can't be active at the same time as Burst of Speed. You can still assign one point here if you want and use it if you're struggling with high elemental damage areas and you lack resistances. For the skill distribution, you want to max out Wake of Fire first. Once you max out Wake of Fire, you can focus on Fire Blast to further increase its damage. You can see on the screen how you should assign your skills. The idea here is to use Fire Blast until you unlock Wake of Fire at level 12, then keep cranking Wake of Fire until it's maxed, and then pump Fire Blast to further increase Wake of Fire's damage. Use Burst of Speed to increase your attack speed, which increases how fast you can drop Wake of Fire traps. Runes are a special type of socketed item that will not only provide unique properties, but they can also be combined with other runes to create what's called a rune word. Rune words can be formed by inserting runes in a specific order inside certain types of equipment. The item must be normal rarity, able to support the rune word, and it needs to have the same amount of sockets as runes are required. Note that some magical items have sockets on them, but even if you put the runes in the right order, the rune word will not be created, and you'll essentially lose your runes, so be sure to use normal rarity items only. While rune words are often referred to as end game equipment, some of them can be crafted very early into Diablo 2 Resurrected and should not be so hard to come by. If you're lacking a base, you can check with merchants since they often sell socketed items, but make sure they are normal in rarity. 
Rune words are the most reliable way to gear up your character while you advance through the game, so I strongly suggest that you take a look at the complete list on our wiki and periodically check the runes that you have and rune words that you can craft. I've posted a link to rune words in the description below, so make sure you look at this page and bookmark it as you'll be referring to it often. Runes can be farmed by doing Countess runs. The Countess is a super unique monster that can be found inside the Forgotten Tower in Act 1. Each time you kill her, she will always drop between 1 and 3 runes, and their level will depend on the difficulty setting. Elemental resistances are key when trying to survive in Diablo II Resurrected. Most enemies deal elemental damage and having high resistances will mitigate a great percentage of this damage. For this reason, I strongly recommend that you focus on equipment pieces that provide plus resistances during your normal difficulty of the game. You can check your current resistances by opening the stat menu and looking at the bottom of the menu. Resistances cap at plus 75% and ideally you'll want to max all of them when you're reaching the end of normal difficulty. Make sure to periodically check your equipment to balance them out and get them as high as possible. Since loot is random, you won't have control over the equipment that you get during early and even mid-stage gameplay other than creating rune words. Having said that, there are some general guidelines on the stats that you should be looking for on your items to make sure that your character scales up with the increasing difficulty. Remember that trap throwing speed is not affected by faster cast rate, but instead by increased attack speed. This is very important when it comes to selecting which items to equip. For helmets, the first one you want to be on the lookout for is called Nadir, and it is a rune word made up of the Nef and Tyr runes and is equipable at level 13. This helmet provides a good amount of defense as well as plus 5 strength, allowing you to save some stats during the early stages of gameplay. The second helmet is the Lore rune word, which is crafted from the Ort and Soul runes and is equipable at level 27. If you happen to come across a Soul rune, then you can use it to craft this helmet, which provides plus 1 to all skills as well as 30% lightning resistance. When it comes to weapons, you're going to want to be on the lookout for the Leaf Rune Word, which is a staff that's made up of the Tear and Roll runes and is equipable at level 19. This Rune Word provides plus 3 to fire skills, which includes your traps, greatly increasing your output damage. It also provides a good amount of defense, as well as plus 33% cold resistance. The runes required can be farmed from the normal difficulty Countess, so you should make a couple of runs until you get a Tear and Roll runes. Once you do, make sure to talk to a car to buy a 2-socket staff to create this Rune Word. The next weapon you should be on the lookout for is the Spirit Rune Word that's crafted from Tal, Thul, Ort, and Am runes that's 4 runes and is equipable at level 25. This Rune Word can be crafted on both weapons and shields. It increases both your damage thanks to its plus 2 to all skills, as well as increases your defense thanks to faster hit recovery, vitality, and life stolen per hit. Finding a 4 socketed weapon can be a little tricky, but stay on the lookout for Crystal Swords, Long Swords, and Broad Swords. If you happen to play the Secret Cow level, if you find any unsocketed of these types of weapons, you can get a guaranteed 4 sockets from Larzuk by completing the Siege of Haragoth quest. The last thing to be on the lookout for for weapons is claws both magical and rare. Claw weapons are exclusive to the Assassin and usually come with plus Assassin skills or plus Trap skills on them. You can equip one claw on each hand, allowing you to greatly increase your damage output. If you come across one of these that provides good stats, then it's a perfect fit for this build. When it comes to shields, the first one you want to be on the lookout for is the Ancient's Pledge Rune Word, which is crafted from the Ral, Ort, and Tal runes and is equipable at level 21. This shield provides a huge boost to resistances. If you can't find an Ort rune, you can make one by combining three Ral runes inside the Herodric Cube. The other shield you can use is the Spirit Rune Word, as I previously mentioned it can be crafted on shields, which is crafted from Tal, Thul, Ort, and Alm runes and is equipable at level 25. If you find the runes in a 4 slot shield, then Spirit is a great option as well. This shield provides plus 2 to all skills and provides many defensive stats such as elemental resistances, faster hit recovery, and vitality. For the armor, you want to be on the lookout for the Stealth Rune Word, which is crafted from Talon Eth Runes and is equipable at level 17. This is by far the best armor you can get early on. The faster walk speed works great with this build, while the poison resistance and faster hit recovery, which allows you to recover control of your character sooner after each hit, provides you with more survivability. The faster hit recovery is very important as it usually helps you avoid stun locks when surrounded by enemies. When it comes to gloves, you'll want to focus on defensive stats such as life and resistances. Increased attack speed is also another good one that you can find on gloves, but prioritize defense over offense on these. Make sure you swap your belt as soon as you reach Act 2 for the maximum amount of potions. Regarding stats, you want to focus on life and resistances. Some merchants might offer magical belts with a lot of life on them, which are a great option. You'll want to search for faster run walk speed on your boots as well as resistances in life. Run walk speed is important to quickly navigate through the map, so make sure you get it. You'll want to search for rings that provide resistances and life. 
and similar to rings, you want to find an amulet that provides you with life or resistances. An amulet with plus trap skills can also be great to increase your damage. You'll find many charms as you advance through the game. While having these in your inventory is great, they can easily occupy a lot of space, limiting the amount of loot you can pick up. Try to focus on plus life, plus resistances, and plus magic find, as these are the more important ones for your build. When it comes to mercenaries, Act 2 mercenaries are the best choice for all builds due to their paladin auras and the ability to equip polearm weapons. Being able to use polearms is very important because many powerful rune words can be crafted on them providing various buffs or debuffing enemies. You can recruit this mercenary from Grease and Luke Golane. When it comes to selecting an aura, you'll want to select the prayer mercenary found on normal difficulty. The prayer aura provides heal regeneration, allowing you to survive longer without using potions. Once you reach nightmare difficulty, you can hire a holy freeze aura mercenary, which slows enemies around you, providing great crowd control. You won't have a lot of spare equipment during the beginning of Diablo 2 Resurrected, but you can equip your mercenary with any you have or buy him a pull arm from a merchant. If you happen to have spare runes, make sure you craft an insight rune word on a pull arm, as this weapon provides you with a meditation aura, greatly increasing your mana regeneration, as well as increasing your mercenary's combat abilities. Final tips. Doing a couple of Countess runs will give you a lot of runes that would not only be useful for this build, but any other character that you might make. Make sure to save all runes that you find inside your stash. If you're having trouble finding a base for your rune words, make sure to periodically check on merchants as they usually have good ones. The Assassin is the only character that can open chests without keys, so you won't have to worry about carrying keys when playing as one. If you happen to find a good unique or set item that you like, don't hesitate to swap it with your current gear. I excluded all unique and set items from this guide because there's no reliable way of acquiring them early on. I personally like to run my belt with two healing potion columns and two mana potion columns, but you can also add antidote potions or thawing potions. Using these potions will not only cure their respective status effect, but also provide plus 50 resistance to their corresponding elemental resistance. Once you equip an insight rune word on your mercenary, he will be your main way to recover mana, so make sure to keep him alive by using potions on him. To do this, press and hold shift and then right click on the potion you wish to use. If you're playing on controller, hold down the left trigger and then press the appropriate button on the D-pad. Stay tuned for more Diablo 2 build guides and be sure to check out our Diablo 2 Resurrected Wiki for more information about the game. So what did you guys think of the build? What builds are you guys going to be playing at launch? Let us know in the comments below.